Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. I'm your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaken Analytics. Find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaken Analytics. Head over to chakenanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email. Follow along with this show. I pull a lot of the content from uh, that email for this show. Uh, as always, um, take the stock ideas and run them through your process. So U.S. equities closed lower on Tuesday, reversing earlier gains. Treasuries were mixed with the curve steepening. The dollar was stronger versus the euro and weaker versus the yen. Gold finished down 2.8% and WTI crude ended up 1.9%. As we get to the desk this morning, though, futures are down. S&P futures down about 3% uh, after equities suffered their worst quarter since the financial crisis. Asian markets were weaker overnight with Japan down 4.5%. South Korea. South Korea is an important market. Uh, definitely think you should be paying attention to the KOSPI as it relates to the supply chain, especially for tech. Hong Kong down as well. European markets are under pressure. Treasuries are mostly stronger with the curve flattening. So we're bull flattening here. Dollar is uh, seeing good gains against the euro and sterling. Also up against the yen, which is slightly surprising given the uh, futures selling off. I think we're going to start to see that dash for dollars again, though. Gold is up a half a percent. WTI crude down one and a half percent. So here it is, folks. Structure hasn't changed, right? This was the level. 2647, 38.2% retracement level. We've been talking about it in our note and on this show for over a week. All right, so hopefully nobody got caught front running a breakout, right? We've been saying we want to see a breakout. We want to see this level, right? If we broke through this level, you had an air pocket up to 2900. If resistance was holding, it meant the bears were still in control. Well, so far it looks like resistance held, right? Another fail at that first resistance level. 23.50 is initial support on the way down. That's the December lows. Uh, 2,100, if that fails to hold. Uh, resistance again, 26.50. RSI is in bearish ranges. That small divergence uh, did not play out right now, and it looks like we're going to head lower. Uh, chicken money flow is bullish. Uh, so the indicators are sending a little bit of a mixed message. The point is, let price dictate here, folks. You had a downtrend where support gave way fairly quickly, right? And then your first run at resistance fails. Hopefully, nobody was front running this. Like, if you were buying stocks yesterday, if you were buying stocks on Monday in anticipation of this breakout, um, you might want to question that strategy going forward uh, in a market like this. The bears are in control. There's no two ways about it. 2647 has to give way for me to even consider taking another view. Uh, we're turning now to our market in a minute. What are we writing about in our note today? Well, stocks dropped to close the quarter. As first resistance holds, we hit on that. IWM continues to lag while the Qs are the best of the three. Every Wednesday, we do a uh, midweek market update where I look at the three main market ETFs, SPY, IWM, and Qs. Uh, SPY is kind of our proxy for the market. And then from there, you want to know, well, you know, do you like small caps? Do you like the more growthy large caps? Uh, IWM is a disaster, has been a disaster. The best part is that's not a new trend. If you've been listening to this show for any length of time, you've often heard me talk about how bad the small caps are, kind of how often you hear me talk about how bad energy is. Um, small caps are a train wreck and no reason to believe that that does not continue. Sentiment remains fearful, but off the extremes. Materials are a weak sector in a weak market. We'll take a look at that chart a little bit later on in the show. Futures point uh, to a lower open here today. That should say uh, lower open here today. Uh, as we look at the power bars, still a lot of weakness uh, across the board from a power bars perspective. Right, Taking a look at the Dow down 1.74% yesterday. Uh, zero bull, six bears. S&P 500, nine bulls, 146 bears. NASDAQ, seven bulls, 24 bears. Small caps, there's your disaster. Although they were, in fairness, an outperformer yesterday. Bonds down to extending yields higher. Energy was your leading stock yesterday. So uh, your leading sector, rather. So beat down rebound, maybe. Uh, you can't get, get me excited about energy. There's just nothing I see there uh, that even remotely looks compelling. So According to the Chicken Power Bar, large cap stocks and small cap stocks are strongly bearish. Stock of the day. 
Vulcan Materials. This is a stock I'm highlighting in my note today. So two days in a row, uh, I'm showing you the stock that I'm highlighting in my note. Why am I highlighting it? Well, because the market traded into resistance and it looks like it's failing. So now I want bearish stocks that are overbought. Vulcan Materials is a bearish stock and a weak trend in a weak industry group. Power gauge rating is bearish because when we take the 20 factors, five in each of these four categories, they roll out bearish. The financials are very bearish. Earnings and technicals are actually bullish here, but the experts are bearish. So when we roll all this up, we come out with this bearish rating for a stock that has been underperforming the market since November with persistently bearish money flow. Uh, we have a little bit of a snapback rally into first resistance, same as the market. I think we roll over. Stock is overbought. It's underperforming, right? So we have a bearish stock underperforming, becomes overbought, trades into resistance. I think you want to be looking at option strategies potentially. If you can get some liquidity in the options market on Vulcan, uh, I think that might make sense for those of you who do trade to the bearish side of the coin. Take a look at Vulcan materials. Looking at our sector tracker now, movement of the major sectors over the last five days. Still all green. We'll see what happens today. It's early, right? It's still early. You know, futures are down about three and a half percent, but you know, vol is vol, right? I mean, we have been, we're in kind of a, you know, a 55, 60 VIX environment, right? A 60 VIX environment apply, you know, implies a 3.75% daily move for the S&P 500. So anything can change, but I think we've still just, but for now we still see some green, but as I've been saying all week, look at your leadership, Reeton Utes. Bond proxies, safety. I've been saying it for a week that this rally has been led by the Utes. That's not encouraging. Healthcare industrial staples also outperforming. Energy materials, fins, middle of the road, tech comm discretionary towards the bottom of the list. Again, all are positive over the last five days, but looks like a little only bear market rally. Bear market rally. So what we want to do is look for the trends of underperformance. Go find my note from yesterday where we look at the uh, relative strength trends for the different sectors, right? And the ones that have been weak, you might be able to find some bearish opportunities there. Our industry in focus today, cap market services. Over the past six months, this group has been an underperformer. Uh, lagged the S&P 500 by 55 basis points. But the power bar ratio is very weak, 12 bulls, two bears. Currently ranked number seven of 21 subsectors, having moved up 10 slots over the past week. Fact set data research, FDS, Hamilton Lane, HLNE, and S&P Global, SPGI are your very bearish stocks within this group that you want to avoid. And if we take a look at the ETF. Now, the ETF itself has a neutral plus rating. Uh, 12 bulls, two bears, weak trend, right? Below this declining long-term trend line. Money flow persistently bearish. In fairness, not a ton of liquidity here. I think that there are probably better ETFs out there to get exposure to capital market services. But if we just kind of want to pay attention to the group in general, we have an underperformer that's overbought, that's been bearish, right? Wouldn't be surprised to see a fade here, right? Doesn't excite me, even with the neutral plus rating. Uh, because remember, it's rating and relative strength. Something can have a bullish rating, but if it doesn't have the relative strength, I don't want to touch it. And that's important, really important. Uh, cap mark services doesn't look like anything I want to touch here in the near term. Uh, taking a look at what's trending now, yesterday's S and P 500 movers and shakers. So energy outperforms. So we see, uh, XEC and Fang, uh, get some juice to the upside. Uh, that's, uh, two energy stocks, 13% and 11% respectively. Okay. He's been a volatile name of late and I didn't see a ton out there to kind of get me excited, uh, about that move. Uh, if I take a look at OKE, not a lot happening there. MOS, MOS uh, up 8% on the day, right? A lot of volatility in the market. Not sure much is company specific at this stage of the game, right? It's kind of hard to get excited, right? Some USDA data out that might have helped uh, MOS uh, on the day, but nothing company specific right there. As I take a look at URI, uh, up 8% yesterday. Uh, again, not a lot of company-specific news driving trading uh, in that name, more just kind of things trading and ebbing and flowing uh, within the context of their groups. On the loser side of the board, DXC 
DXC gives back 9%. Not a lot in the way of catalysts there. Uh, tech, kind of the IT index was off, uh, kind of trading down with that group. VFC, folks, uh, you know, retail and consumer exposed names, uh, going to be tough, right? Nothing company specific there, but we know what's going on. Stores are closing, right? They're not open, right? They're furloughing employees. Uh, hard to get excited, right? In so the stores, right? Like Kohl's, you know, are seeing the downside, furloughing employees. Uh, but what about their suppliers, right? You know, folk, you know, you have to go in and look at look at the products that VF Corp supplies, right? Um, you have to start thinking that the stores that buy that product are closed. Why would you looking at VFC, CBRE? Uh, real estate, commercial real estate uh, is in trouble. It looks like to me, uh, nothing company specific, but commercial real estate could be in for, uh, for some tough sledding ahead and Dollar Tree. Well, Dollar Tree is kind of interesting to me because obviously stores are closed now. Uh, but if we are in a deep and prolonged recession, uh, I have to think the, the dollar stores actually do well in that environment. Also think Walmart. Uh, so on Wednesdays, we look at sentiment sentiment uh, measured a lot of ways. But what I will say just briefly, if there's anyone new who doesn't know how I kind of my view of the world, uh, I'm a watch what they do, not what they say type person. I know that there are folks who hang on the polls, right? AAII polls and things of that nature, right? Those polls are asking people their opinion. Uh, people's opinions are not worth much to me in the context of gauging sentiment. Uh, I'm more interested in what are people doing with their money, right? Uh, I don't care what you say. Show me what you're doing with your money, uh, right? Because that's where your conviction lies. Anybody can say anything, right? So, you know, talk is cheap. Uh, so I look at market-based indicators to get my sense of sentiment, All right? So something like the CBOE options, uh, equity option put call ratio, right? This is what people are doing with their money, right? Are they favoring puts or are they favoring calls, right? Now, we got to an extreme level of fear uh, last week, and we've worked off that extreme level here in the near term. Uh, but we are still at levels that are generally point to uh, much more fear than greed in the marketplace, right? Other ways to look at this is the VIX, right? The VIX is, you know, based on what's trading in the market. You can't actually trade the VIX, but you can look at it's based on what's trading in the market. I think the CNN fear and greed index is great. It's seven market-based metrics that give you a sense of sentiment. They're market-based. The surveys, honestly, people like them. I don't. Your opinion as it relates to your view on the market, means less to me than what you're actually doing with your cash. Uh, so that's my view of the world, and that's why I use market-based metrics and not survey-based metrics. Taking a look at the materials now. Materials are a weak sector in a weak market. So you wanna look for opportunities here, right? I showed you Vulcan, right? You can see my process, right? Market trades into resistance. Looks like it's rolling over. Let's go find the weak sectors. XLB, materials have been weak. Let's find a weak stock within a weak sector, Vulcan. Right, that was basically how I got to Vulcan today. XLB material select sector spider downturn rally 38.2% retracement. Right, no match market, no match for the retracement level. RSI in bearish ranges, massively underperforming the S&P 500. Right, this is kind of you can see the setup there. I'm not saying it's guaranteed to work, but that's the setup. Right, you could play it through XLB. You could play it through the individual stocks like Vulcan, but one way or the other, I think that you do not want to be anywhere near materials right now. That may change, right? But you know, 200 day moving average, 50 day moving average, right? All signs point to you not wanting to touch this. So don't, same as energy. Finally, we'll look at some seasonality. Does seasonality point to a bounce? I guess, yes. I'm not going to make that call. Uh, but over the past 20 years, April has been higher on average by about 2%. And it is positive 79% of the time over 20 years. Now, I think if you go back a little longer in history, those statistics uh, started to, uh, to weaken a bit. Uh, but over the past 20 years, uh, April's up 2% on average uh, and is positive 79% of the time. Uh, from a hit rate standpoint, it's matched only by November. Uh, but obviously now we are in a downtrend. We are in a bear market. That could change things. Uh, I don't hang my hat on seasonality. I just kind of like to take a peek at it on the first day of every month. Uh, but it would never be the driving process uh, behind my views. 
Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash test drive. I'll be back tomorrow. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with stockcharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.